Welcome back to Hale. Week number 17, I think it is. I don't know, Greg. I've switched off all my electronic devices and I'm never connecting to the internet again. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. After the last three people, I'm actually like petrified that my my bank card is going to attack me when I go to the ATM. They tried to warn us. They gave us Terminator a long time ago. But nobody I think listened. Been more than Terminator. I think there's been like, didn't Will Smith slap somebody in some movie? I think I wrote No, that was real life. Oh, that was real life. Right. Well, we have... Tanya, and she's joining us from Amata um, from, uh, for Cybersecurity Month. Uh, welcome, Tanya. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Joel. Tell us a bit about Hi, yourself. Hi, Tanya. Okay. So I'm the Senior Cybersecurity Analyst for Amata. Um, my main responsibilities are doing implementations for EDR and doing threat hunting. We also do some bit of automated pen testing, uh, vulnerability management through Qualys and Tenable. So I've got many hats that I wear. Um, sometimes I wear one more than others. <laughs> There's that hat thing again, Sohail. So uh, you were a white hat, a black hat, a yellow hat, a red hat. No, a red hat, somebody different. <laughs> right. Well, welcome. See, so the statement hats. today is staying safe on social media with AFM. MFA. So, is, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Dyslexic. So Let's first of all, can you can you can you safe on social media what, with MFA? What is MFA? Okay, so MFA is just an additional layer of security. It's multi-factor authentication. So instead of having just your password when logging in, it will ask you for additional information like a code or biometrics. Um, depends on the application, and that's just to add an extra layer of security to protect yourself from being hacked uh, in case your password has been leaked. That's great because obviously this is this is related to social media, right? And because I have social media manager in my job title, everyone assumes I know everything about social media known to man. So what happens is every second day I get somebody where the personal would work saying, my account has been hacked. Help, 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 help. I mean, I don't think people realize how common it is and what actual threat it is with your social media in today's day and age. I mean, can you just start by introducing the topic a bit and telling us a bit about why it's important? Okay, so having MFA on your social media accounts is really important. Um, besides the impersonation, you know, if you your profile is being impersonated, they get into your profile, they clone it. Um, they don't have to stay on your profile. They can clone it, send new friend requests to, let's say, on Facebook, they send new friend requests, and they can extort your friends at the end of the day. It's not mm. just you being extorted. Uh, especially businesses, you know, like you mentioned, you the social media manager, a lot of damage can be done when they get into that account uh, mm. after being compromised because it can do damage to your image. They can mm. start posting things that um, aren't appropriate at the end of the day just to damage the company's image. So it's really important to have that extra layer of security um, to protect yourself and to protect others as well and your business. So what are some of the ways that people go about compromising or hacking social media that, that users can be aware of? Yeah, so uh, something that I came across recently is uh, it wasn't a social media platform, but I do know they employ the same tactic on social media is it was a lady's MTN account and she got a call from a fake service center and it was saying um, it was another lady that wanted to report her number because the number is stolen and they're going to send her OTP and mm. they need the OTP. And the reason that why they wanted that OTP is they already compromised the email and the password. They just needed the OTP to get on to her account. Um, so she had MFA on. But at the end of the day, she realized something was wrong. That's one way they do it. Um, it's called MFA fatigue as well, where they will continuously send pins and you'll accept requests and inadvertently accept them. Uh, but another thing that I've found, people that don't have MFA on their accounts is they reuse passwords. Uh, yeah. I found that uh, you know, Incredible Connection was breached a while ago. And a lot of people come to me, yeah, but how did they know how to get into my password? And I said, well, you know, something that, like incredible connection being 
breached and they've got your password and your email, they just reuse it. You don't have MFA mm -hmm. on it. Um, that's how they got into your account. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that brings up a good point because there's a lot of people out there that reuse passwords. So if the password on my Facebook is the same as my password on my um, banking app, banking app, yeah. Um, just <laughs> we have so many passwords, it's too difficult. If you had to reuse the password, but you had MFA, would that would that be okay, or is that still not advisable? It's still not advisable, but it's at least a, a little safer with having MFA right. enabled. As long as you're aware of your login information, and if you get a notification that you're trying to log in from a different device and uh, it requires MFA and you're being contacted for MFA code, just be aware that you know it wasn't you. Be aware of your actions and what you're currently busy with. If you know that you're not trying to log in from a different device, then don't accept the MFA codes or request to send the MFA code to anyone else. Um, it's really important. OTPs, MFA codes, um, never share it with anyone at the end of the day. So, Tanya, I'm sitting here, average Joe, or maybe not me, say, for example, a friend of mine, um, still in college or maybe they're a bit older, no real affiliation with a company or an entity. It's just my Facebook for my friends and family. Why would I be at risk? Why you would be at risk is, you know, it's not they can exploit you at the end of the day. They can exploit your family, uh, making fake accounts saying, hey, I need money. Uh, please mm. send it to me. So it's really important, you know, you are vulnerable at the end of the day. We've had instances, uh, I think you guys have done the deep fake with Keith, I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, they can use those images and to create deep fakes at the end of the day. Uh, we've, I've had personal instances where someone tried to breach my daughter's account on TikTok and try and use that against her. And it was actually a syndicate trying to kidnap children. Uh, so it's really important at the end of the day. That's, that's, that's I was alarming. Say, that that yeah. quiet is both of us actually going, both of us have children going, sorry, hmm. say that again? I mean, I, I always look at these MFA things when they come and go, no, I mean, I've just looked at my banking one now. It's been asking me for two years to, to put it on. I'll be doing that after this. <laughs> Because I think people don't understand why. They go, it's just a, a pain in the ass. At work, I have to do the same thing. I have to authenticate mm. with this thing, type in a number, do a fingerprint, do a face. It becomes such a pain. Why do I want to do it in my personal life? But you, you're you an average Joe. You're the person on the street, and you've actually been affected by this. Uh, and, and, and what I'm leading to is... How how do we do this? I mean, are there are there training manuals? Are there step by steps? How do we actually go about securing our social media? So there, there's a lot of um, social media accounts where you can just go into your security settings. You just go to settings and security, and mm. it will be there in broad daylight for you to enable. You know, if someone's not unsure, Google's always your friend. It's not like mm -hmm. networks. <laughs> <laughs> where you can actually Google and it will give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to enable your MFA. Uh, something that's overlooked as well is enabling MFA on your WhatsApp account. Um, I think we've discussed mm. that quite a few times in our ISID meetings as well, is enable it on your WhatsApp, enable it on your Facebook, anywhere where you can enable it, where you can protect yourself, enable it. If you struggle, ask someone maybe that knows if you don't want to Google it. It's really easy. It's quick. Yes, I agree with Greg. You know, um, it's extra. So you have to put in that extra pin. But at least you're safe in you keeping your mm. family and your friends safe as well by not exploiting them. Mm. And tell me, Tanya, what are some of the warning signs to look out for yeah. um, as, as a user where you suspect either someone is trying to or someone already has hacked into your account or someone else's? So the, the one thing that you can do when you suspect that your account's already been breached is um, all accounts have a setting where you go into your settings and you can see the devices that are connected. Disconnect mm. all devices from there. I've done it with my Netflix where I suspect that something happened there. Um, kick everyone off, change your password, enable your multi-factor, and you should be good to go. Uh, if you find a fake profile where the TikTok or Facebook report that profile if it's someone that's mm. impersonating you. 
Mm-hmm. And I think also something that people overlook, especially with business accounts, is they give access to 10, 15 people on the account. Um, oh, let mom handle the account as well. Oh, if my sister needs account. People don't also realize that the more people who have access to your staff, the more vulnerable you are. That's correct, yes. Well, I'm definitely kicking my mother-in-law off my Netflix now because <laughs> she's hacking me. <laughs> I think I think that's the big thing. I think a lot of people don't don't know if they've been. I mean, I'm now thinking about some of the friend requests that I've ignored because you 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 get a friend request from somebody high up in the company, um, and I don't know if it's real or if it's not. Um, how do you go about checking to see if you're getting a request or something that it's real? Is that why well, you keep ignoring my friend request? Right? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> So uh, one thing you can do is um, reach out to that person, ask them if they sent you a friend request. I did it recently with my brother-in-law. I received a friend request on Facebook and I realized that's not his account. I reached out to him first to ask, did you send me a friend request? And he said no. The other thing you can do is look at the person before you accept the the invite. You can go and look at the profile. Look how far mm-hmm. back. Um, when did, was that profile created? I mean, if you scroll down to Facebook, if it's something new, there's like two posts where they just update the cover photo and the profile photo, mm-hmm. and that's all there is. You know, that's already an indicator that something's not right. It's not an old profile. It's not the same friends. And all of a sudden, it's just odd. I get it on Instagram a lot. Um, usually, you can tell by the username. If it's got a lot of numbers in it, is generally a bit suspicious and the amount of posts and the amount of followers. You see someone with two posts following 300 people, but two people are following them back. More likely than not, it's a fake account. Yeah, so, and so, it's so you, the same. Sorry, Greg, it's the same principle yeah. with your LinkedIn accounts. Look at what they're following, who are they linked to, mm. you know, is it an active account? How far back does it reach? Um, it's all indicators. If it's something new and there's not a lot of followers and it's say, Bodhi trying to add you, but it doesn't look right, there's not enough people, it's not active, then don't accept mm. it. So just so they don't take over your account, they actually create another one that looks the same. Yeah. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, okay. so they, they, there's two factors to this. They can either take over your account and lock you out of your account and bribe you to get your account back. Um, that's what they did with one of my daughter's friends as well. And then, you know, they can clone your account. Uh, Mm. Another thing to maybe consider doing is your privacy settings, not making your profile viewable for the whole world, but only people that you invite and that you know see your account at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, and then they would. So I had an incident with a close relative where she's been been speaking to one of her friends for quite a long time and they actually talked her into a very successful um, business that they invested in sort of like an online trading thing and she knew this person personally in real life assuming it was the same person and then eventually as always happens just check out this website you'll find more info click the link and boom account gone yeah so i mean don't click links ever yeah don't click links if you're not sure don't click it yeah, I think I think that's the big thing. A lot of people don't realize that just by putting in a little bit of extra effort. I mean, I've realized that now. And I promise you, after this podcast, I'm going to go and fix a whole bunch of my stuff because I didn't really think it was important. But And that's so much, a little bit of extra work. But I've re- realized that, you know, if you clone my account, you could send Jacques a message from me and he'd probably accept it. Well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Jacques. But, uh, and I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what they're doing. Yeah. Makes mm. you think, I think. So yeah. I'm scared of robots coming out <laughs> and AI. I'm now scared of people hacking my social media. Um, yeah. Um, I don't Where even you know going where to go with scared of the about... internet. <laughs> they can even exploit your RAM as well. While it's offline. I'll send hey, you I'm going to end this meeting before Tanya scares me off a little bit. <laughs> I should start um, sharing my articles with you guys, the articles I read. Yes, please, please, please. We could actually share it ironically on our social media. And yeah. I'm sure most of our, our, our readers would love to to get some insight. Um, Tanya, 
could you close up for us with some like top tip, top tips, even just one word of advice for people? One word of advice, enable your MFA. Don't oh. think that you'll not be exploited and it only happens to certain people or high profile people. It can happen to anyone. Enable your MFA, keep your eyes open, be aware of everything that happens around you with your technology. Perfect. Yeah. Couldn't have summed it up better. Tanya, if you see a Facebook request, I promise you it's me. But I can't <laughs> I'll guarantee the same from Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tanya, thank you so much. I tell you, as we come into the end of Cybersecurity Week, uh, we've done this for a few years now, but it really is eye-opening to see how things have changed and what we need to do. So thanks. Uh, so, Hal, sort your social media out. Um, I will accept your friend request only after I've verified. It's not me, Greg. In- it's not me. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks, everyone. Tanya, it's uh, been a pleasure. We- I really enjoyed the session. And I mean, thanks, guys. eye-opening. Thank the you, Greg. I'll catch you next week. Catch you on the last one. Cheers, cheers. Yep. Bye. Looking forward cheers, to it. Cheers, bye.